Good evening. My name is Christine Crocker. I'm a retired police captain with the Cumberland, Rhode Island Police Department. I'm also the leader of the team that will be assessing the Manchester Police Department over the next several days. At this time, I would like to introduce the other member of the assessment team. To my right is retired Colonel Marianne Viverette from the Gavisburg, Maryland Police Department. The Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies of Gainesville, Virginia has authorized us to assess the Manchester Police Department, which is a candidate for reaccreditation. The Manchester Police Department has voluntarily contracted with the Commission to work toward reaccreditation and thereby continue to demonstrate professional excellence. When the agency originally entered this process, it received the Commission Standards Manual, which contains 480 standards encompassing all facets of law enforcement management, operations, and support functions. The Commission accredited this agency in 2008 after determining it had demonstrated compliance with all applicable standards. The agency's proof of compliance are on file at the Manchester Police Department, located at 351 Chestnut Street. Since then, the agency has attempted to maintain these standards. Our responsibilities as assessors for the Commission is to revisit the agency and verify that it has remained in compliance since it was last accredited. Chief David Mara, Chief of Police for the Manchester Police Department, has appointed Greg Murphy as the accreditation manager to oversee the reaccreditation process for this agency. In accordance with Commission Public Information Policy, the agency's candidacy for reaccreditation has been publicized in this area. In accordance with Commission Public Information Policy, the agency's <coughs> The public hearing is intended to provide interested citizens, agency employees, an opportunity to address this assessment team concerning the agency. Any comments that you make will be considered by us as we review the agency and will also be reported back to the commission. If you wish to supplement your verbal comments with a written statement or exhibits, you may present them to us at the time you speak or you may send them to the commission where they will be reviewed when the agency is presented for accreditation at a formal commission conference. You may mail your written remarks to the commission at the following address. The Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies Incorporated, 13575 Heathcote Boulevard, Suite 302, Gainesville, Virginia, 201556660. At the beginning of the meeting, a sign-in sheet was made available in the rear of this room. Those of you who indicated a desire to speak will be given an opportunity to address us in a few moments. We ask that you limit your comments to five minutes. If you wish to speak with any member of the Commission staff, you may reach them at telephone number 703-352-4225. The Commission staff representative for this agency is Stephen Mitchell. You may also email your comments to Kalia at Kalia.org placing the agency name in the subject line. I would like to remind you that this meeting is being recorded and the recording will be forwarded to the Commission for its review. Are there any questions from members of the audience before we begin? If anybody needs the phone number, email, or address, you can see me at the conclusion of the meeting. I'd like to call our first speaker, Sister Jacqueline Vern Burnham. Burnham. I'm Sister Jacqueline Virgo. Um, we, I opened a center over on the west side of Manchester called the Holy Cross Family Learning Center. And I invited Chief Mara to come over to visit so that he could meet and int introduce himself to the immigrants and refugees. And he was very uh, wonderful about doing that. He did come. I also asked him if he would be willing to send the the officers from the west side over to meet the um, immigrants and refugees, and he also did that. So we were very happy that um, that they were willing to take up their time to come over to the center to do that. Beside that, we uh, have had several orientations in the evening with many of the refugee families and immigrant families in the city of Manchester. We did that last year and also this year, and the um, police captain and, and chief are always willing to attend those meetings and to explain to the people 
um, why they are there in the city and how they can help them, how they can keep them safe. They have also, um, <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, there was another another thing I wanted to say, and I can't remember what it was. So it can't be too important. I'm sure someone else will say it. So um, we're very, very grateful for all that the police do in the city, uh, for the, for not only the immigrants and refugees, but for all of our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you for allowing us to be this evening. I'm the director of police standards and training for the state of New Hampshire. I'd like to take a few minutes to say how an outstanding job the National Police Department does in training throughout the state. They are a prototype agency for us in the state of New Hampshire. We actually certify 230 agencies in, in the whole state. And with the leadership and the, the, the charismatic work that they do for us, it's outstanding. We couldn't ask for any better teachers in, in our academy. The recruits they send us do an outstanding job. They normally finish with the top 2% of the class. And this is because of the leadership of the National Police Department. The command staff does a great job in, in looking at their backgrounds and doing a screening for them. When they come to us, they're ready to go. And in fact, uh, Chief Meyer and Captain Kuna recently uh, led a training session for police standard training. Over 400 police officers from around the northeast part of the state. And for a city chief to take the time to come up there and teach with 400 police officers was outstanding. They did a great job. We have to also thank the U.S. Attorney for sponsoring that. So I'd like to say this evening to you, and I have a written comments for you this evening, is that without them, the state would be in really difficult times. Uh, we are so proud to be able to stand here and recommend, and I hope for your accreditation to manage the police department. They are basically some of the best of the best in the state of New Hampshire. Thank you for being with all of you here this evening. I'd like to give you the uh, written comments if I would this evening. Certainly. <coughs> My name is Marty Bolden. I'm the director of the City of Manchester Office of Youth Services. I also serve on the Community Advisory Board of the Manchester Police Department, the State Advisory Group on Juvenile Justice for the State of New Hampshire, and I'm a commissioner for the Victims Assistance Commission out of the Attorney General's Office. But in my capacity as directing the City's juvenile, uh, Certified Juvenile Delinquency Diversion Program, myself and my staff have an incredible access to working with the Police Department particularly community policing and the juvenile uh, division, we have found that because they are so open to working with us in terms of providing alternatives to incarceration and detaining for young people, that we've had a very positive impact on reducing the number of young people that are going to court while also seeing a decrease in the juvenile delinquency crime rate through the city for the last several years. On top of that work, I just want to take a couple minutes and particularly commend Community Policing Division and the Juvenile Division for doing significant outreach to nonprofit organizations and to um, uh, new Americans, immigrants, and refugees in the city. I'm very proud to note that the Manchester Police Department, because of its leadership throughout the organization, is forward thinking about trying to engage people that may not be familiar with traditional law enforcement entities, and I also think that they do a phenomenal job of looking at alternatives to incarceration and detention for young people. It's important also to note that uh, Lieutenant Legacy from uh, the Juvenile Division and Chief Mara also sit on the Disproportionate Minority Contact Subcommittee of the State Advisory Group of Juvenile Justice and are really at the forefront of trying to make sure that policing technology is meeting community need. Uh, we're really proud of our relationship with the police department. They offer us instant access and are always there to pick up the phone whenever we need help. This is extraordinarily important to us because it is in our office that many times the difference between a life in the criminal justice system and a life of a, as a productive system, citizen, that decision is made. And without the assistance of the police department, there would be far, more, uh, far many more young people in the juvenile justice system. So I wholeheartedly endorse them in their work and uh, support you in, in making sure that they uh, continue their accreditation. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Chief Pat Sultan of the Dallas Town Police Department, Manchester's next door neighborhood of the West. Um, I'd like to begin by saying I'm here wearing several different hats to me. I'm here as far as a chief of an accredited agency since 1992. Um, we understand in Dallas Town uh, the dedication and need to comply with the ideals and standards of its leader, of the leader. 
Um, we believe with Manchester and Bob's those ideas and works to strive every day like we do to do the best we can for the people that we serve. Secondly, I'm here as the president of the Hillsborough County uh, Chiefs Association. Um, Chief Mara, as well as many of the staff, have assisted us in training um, for the, our members as well as resources should we need them. Uh, they've also worked with legislative items uh, for the community and we've gone forward with that. Um, thirdly, I'm here as a Manchester resident. Uh, I live in Manchester. When I go to work, I know my family's safe and that's important as well. Uh, I believe that the people, uh, the officers, and employees of the Manchester Police Department <coughs> embody and embrace the ideals of the I would encourage your recommendation to every recommendation. Thank you, Chief. <coughs> yes, Chief. Uh, my friend Russia said you must be Greek. But, uh, <laughs> good evening. My name is John Kapavis. I'm the United States Attorney for the District of New Hampshire. Um, and I'm also a resident of Manchester. Welcome to my hometown. And thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak in support of the reaccreditation of the Manchester Police Department. Uh, the United States Attorney's Office and the Manchester Police Department enjoy a very close relationship. Uh, both programmatically and uh, as a matter of prosecutions. Programmatically, um, Manchester has a representative on our uh, suspicious activity report review team. They attend them on a monthly basis. Uh, as a result of those monthly meetings, investigations are assigned and Manchester has a seat at that table. Um, Manchester has contributed resources and personnel to the FBI Safe Streets Gang Task Force, and I know that Karen Ramsey, who is the SSRA for we may speak to that as well, but that is um, a huge um, uh, commitment on the part of the Manchester Police Department, and it is an area that's very close um, to me because when I first became the United States Attorney, I went around to some of the chiefs of the larger uh, municipalities, and I said, what are your issues? What, what is it that bothers you, um, and, and what are you afraid of? And when I went to speak to Chief Mara, he told me he was afraid of the growth of gangs in the city of Manchester. Um, and as a result of the impetus provided by the Chief and um, Chief Don Conway in Nashua, we formed a gang issue working group that meets out of my office. Um, we have now knitted together, out of Dave Mara's idea, um, a group that uh, encompasses the entire state of New Hampshire. Uh, we have chiefs and juvenile officers and corrections officers uh, coming from all over the state to meet at my <coughs> office periodically and engage and talk about gang issues and how to erect a bulwark against the growth of gangs in the state. And I have to say, um, and it's not because of me, it's because of him, and it's because of his department that I think the effort has been wildly successful. Um, we have been able to keep um, gangs at bay. Um, and, and these partnerships do uh, uh, contribute to wonderful prosecutions and one of the one I guess the most recent notorious example is the dismantling of a large drug um, ring here in the city of Manchester under the title Operation Snow Crab. Uh, about 11 or 12 officers from the Manchester Police Department were recently honored by my office for their efforts in that. Uh, we busted uh, and dismantled this ring that was responsible for uh, 4,500 Oxycontin pills, uh, a kilo of cocaine, $300,000 in cash, five firearms, and that was a significant hit for the city of Manchester. Um, and, and we're very, very grateful. Um, Manchester has changed a lot. I grew up here, and, and it's changed a lot. And you heard Sister talk about the immigrant community. And you know, we are a refugee relocation community. So the, 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 the character and the nature of this town is changing for the better. It's changing, but the police department has to adapt to those changing circumstances. And I have to tell you, I think that the Manchester Police Department has adapted wonderfully to those changing circumstances. The community outreach <coughs> is a method of violence prevention. I see Captain Riley in the back of the room. I've worked with him doing Arab and Muslim outreach a little bit, outreach to some of our African communities. It's a very progressive leadership here in the state. Um, one example of the regard I have for uh, Chief Merrick is I just recently hosted a training, an uh, officer safety training, for 400 uh, or more uh, law enforcement officers from around the world. Uh, we brought in uh, subject matter experts who were nationally recognized, and in that day-long training, we were able to carve out um, 
some, a panel for local issues. And there were only two chiefs I asked to sit on the panel, and Chief Mara was one of them. Uh, and, he, and he and his uh, captain, Robert Kuhn, put on a tremendous presentation. So um, you, I, I urge you uh, to read credit Manchester, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Michael Guglielmo. I am the director of the Ball Battle Registry for Illinois. In 1985, I went to a west side Montgomery Street property with a submachine gun to kill a drug enforcer. I kicked the door in, I sprayed the place with a machine gun, he dove out the window, ran to the neighbors, called the police department. Within minutes, the entire block was evacuated and it was surrounded by SWAT team Manchester Police. I fired over 200 rounds from a machine gun, had a pistol as well, snorting cocaine, drinking alcohol, ran out of ammunition, I surrendered. The SWAT team took me down. No injuries to me whatsoever. Nobody was injured, thank God. I was sentenced to 22 and a half to 45 years in prison. Entered the prison system in seventh grade education. I left with a master's degree. And five years earlier, because my sentencing judge, George Papagiannis, came out of retirement, advocated my release. When I left prison, couldn't get a job as a college professor like I had done in prison. I was a dishwasher. I washed dishes for $7 an hour. Then I went to work as a roofer. Then I went to work as a cider. Then I started my own roofing company and siding company. Eventually saving enough money to start building houses. And I had a child, Giovanni. It's my baby. He was born with a genetic disorder that would kill him before his first birthday. Doctors told me if you don't find a bone marrow match for him, he will die. I said, what are the chances? They said, one in 20,000. I said, no problem. I'll put 20,000 people in the bone marrow registry. I started a campaign to save my son. I went global. Did the first ball now drive in the history of Italy. The Pope gave Giovanni an apostolic blessing. Giovanni got his match. He's alive today as well. To date, I've added almost 48,000 people to the ball now registry. And 114 people have found matches from that. 114 people got a chance to live. But for the professionalism of the Manchester Police Department, none of this would happen. So I'm here as an advocate for them. They saved my life. And I want you to read quite a bit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nabil Miguel Lynch. I'm a resident of Manchester for the last 13 years. My background is social work and social and criminological research. Uh, last September, the Manchester community presented the community award Community Appreciation Award to Chief Mara and Manchester Police Department. The way it was presented that 15, 16 non-profit organizations uh, serving immigrants, refugees, and others decided to present <coughs> the award to the chief and to the department, uh, signed up, and we had a plaque designed, and we asked Mayor Gatsas to present it to the police department at the meeting of the mayor and Alderman. Basically, for acknowledging the global diversity of Manchester, reaching out and building trust. And uh, reaching out and building, tr building trust actually are the main points that the focus on in a few minutes. Uh, I'm a member of uh, the, 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 uh, <laughs> the Community Advisory Board initiated by the Manchester Police Department for the last two years. For the last few months, and the secretary. The board serves as a bridge to the community at large. It represents partnership with the community at large. I'm emphasizing at large because we started focusing on immigrants and refugees. However, it reaches everybody. The voting members are 17, mostly average residents of Manchester, <coughs> including the chief and three police officers. The chair, the vice chair, and the secretary are civilians, which means that it's really a community board representing the community. It's a partnership. Uh, 
for many immigrants and refugees coming to Manchester, <coughs> the experience of the police in the past in their own countries has never been pleasant between torture, brutality, and everything else. To rebuild the trust in the police has been a tough job for everybody. But the police department did that. Right now, people feel comfortable calling the police. Uh, we have 17 cell phone numbers of community police that people can call at any time. This is something that I don't think it's common or usual in other place. Uh, cultural barriers have been an issue. In many countries, when the police stops you, you get out of the car out of respect. Here, getting out of the car is a problem. So people need to learn, and the police also needs to learn. Building the trust has been the main achievement, I think, of Chief Mara and the Manchester Police Department. Uh, PAL, the Police Athletic League, has been a community center, literally a community center, for kids just to walk in and play and spend a good time and talk to police officers knowing that there are people like them. The barrier of the good form is not there. So if I give credit to Chief Mara, and to the Manchester Police Department, definitely for the trust they have built. Thank you. Thank you. The City of Manchester Health Department. Um, we've been in the city for over 10 years. We cor currently coordinate 75 agencies around violence and crime prevention. The police Department has been a vital key stakeholder in that uh, since the very beginning. Um, we have members of the Police Department who sit on all of our subcommittees to include steering, planning, restoration, prevention, intervention, treatment, our juvenile crime prevention initiative, the Know Your Neighbor block parties, um, and any ad hoc committees that come up. The police department is always there to make sure that there is a presence and that they have interaction with the community. Um, they've been proactively involved with the growing refugee New American population, um, ensuring that all city residents have access to the police department and officers. Their work has helped to reduce barriers to services that have existed in the past. Um, they've also made it very clear that they feel that residents play a very vital role in preventing crime in the community, uh, and they've encouraged residents to get involved. They have consistent communications and interaction with the city's neighborhood watch groups through emails. They also organize um, bi-monthly meetings with watch group captains to provide information, find out what's going on. They also, on an almost weekly basis, send their community <laughs> policing officers to the local neighborhood watch group meetings allowing residents to have one-on-one -on -one contact <coughs> with the officers to share any concerns that they have in the community um, for that officer to either then follow up on or provide the information to another division if that's what's more appropriate. This also gives access to the officers in a non-emergent sense uh, and it also allows residents to feel that their quality of life issues are being addressed. That's not something that I um, think is happening everywhere and I'm very impressed with the level that it's happened here. They've also been a key partner in the Saturday Teen Night program. Teen Night is a agency program that brings together youth uh, workers in the city to work with at-risk youth on Saturday nights to youth drop-in center. Police department is there not as a safety precaution. They are there to give youth um, access to police officers in a way that they normally don't have access. Most of these youth have only seen police officers in the neighborhood, either arresting a family member or a neighbor. This gives them the same thing, one-on-one -on -one contact, to have some time to talk and see that the police department really is there to help them. Um, we know from talking to the youth, both anecdotally as well as um, surveying that we've done with them, that they feel much more positively about the police department after participating in the program and having access to the community police division um, that, that comes to the event. They were also a big contributor and supporter of the recently released City of Manchester Blueprint for Violence Prevention. The blueprint was developed as a plan to combat the root causes of violence in our community and identify ways for residents to feel like they can be involved. Um, they provided a great deal of information throughout the process as well as support, um, and they've continually assisted us with implementing recommendations in the community. Um, I'm both a city employee and a resident, and I can say I'm continually impressed with the level of involvement and workload the police departments continue to have in spite of being understaffed. Uh, I've worked with a number of law enforcement agencies across New Hampshire, and in other states, and the police department's innovative, proactive approach to keeping Manchester a safe and healthy city is something I genuinely appreciate and share with the community. Um, my name is uh, Baldwin Russ I represent Ward 11, uh, the center of the west side. Um, 
Board of Mayor and Alderman. I've been a uh, Alderman for about four years, and now I'm just uh, starting my third term um, as a representative of the community of the West Side and the city as a whole. First of all, I want to welcome you to Manchester. We hope you come back to visit us soon on a more uh, usually uh, tour, <laughs> uh, rather than I'm sure the busy schedules and the short time that you have. Um, the police department has been um, made my job um, a lot easier. Um, it's uh, <coughs> it's nice to know that um, I get a direct response uh, either to the chief or the assistant chief. Uh, my ward, um, in particular, I can talk about a couple of things, and that's uh, number one. Um, it was a uh, a uh, not so nice bar um, in a heavily residential neighborhood uh, that was. Uh, a nuisance to the neighborhood, we'll just say, and um, all kinds of uh, bad activity was happening there. And uh, I just uh, was working with the, uh, the uh, assistant chief Simmons. Um, we were able to uh, shut that down, get their uh, liquor license revoked, and now the, the community in that, that area has been a lot safer because of it. It's been a, a lot more steadily, uh, much more stable place to, to raise the family. Um, Obviously, I'm sure you've looked at the, uh, the financials of the, of the police department, um, and I think that's their biggest challenge right now um, in, this, in this economy. Um, it's, it's very difficult, and we, we ask them to do a lot um, with very little funding in terms of uh, what the department needs. We recognize that um, the department needs um, more staff. We know that, uh, and uh, we're committed to, to helping them and in, in, in reaching those goals. Um, but that being said, um, one thing I can say about the department is that they don't use that as, as a crutch or an excuse. Um, this department is uh, going above and beyond, especially now being so understaffed, um, which is nobody's fault. But, but, but you know, the, the blame must, must stay with the, the Board of Mayor of Alderman in terms of funding. But um, this chief, um, what he did was uh, brought each and every alderman in during the budget process and showed them a, 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 a detailed blueprint of the department, made sure that every alderman uh, understood uh, how the department works and why the department is set up in, in the manner it is. So uh, that is, I think, the uh, biggest accomplishment is doing so much with, uh, with, with so little staff. And uh, in the future, in these next two years, uh, certainly the goal is to uh, help them out in any way we can to get, to, to get the staff. And lastly, I want to talk about an incident that happened in my ward um, in a very, very populated uh, neighborhood. Uh, it was actually a high school two blocks down. There was a standoff um, that happened, uh, unfortunately, uh, for about 48 hours. And the police department was uh, nothing but professional. Um, the community during that, that, uh, that standoff, I can tell you, felt safe and professional. Gentleman held up with, with a little girl with a gun uh, for 48 hours, and um, the uh, staff at the police department and the SWAT team did not panic. Um, in my opinion, that um, although it lasted so long and, and, and people wanted to want it to get done, um, they didn't force the situation. Uh, I think because of that, um, fortunately, the gentleman that was holding up called up uh, lost his life, but the little girl was saved. And, um, and no, no other injuries have happened within the, uh, within the area, within the community, so or in the neighborhood. And uh, with the high school just two blocks down the road, it could have been a very, very um, scary situation. So, um, with that having been said, if uh, uh, the Board of Mayor and Alderman, I, I know my colleague, uh, Walter O'Neill, is here today as well. Um, and uh, also, I did want to mention that I am a uh, board member of the Manchester Police Athletic League. Uh, they just do fantastic things. I'll kind of meet the chairman of the field has been on that road and uh, I do want to say that uh, they're uh, top notch in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Diane Levine. I'm the president of the Ribbon Heights Group. We're a nonprofit organization with over 130 members. We're on the west side of Manchester. Um, I apologize for not being as well versed as most of the speakers that have come before me, but I did want to put my two cents in. Um, there's three specific areas that I would like to draw attention to. Uh, number one is, I have to tell you that I still live in the same house I was born in. 
So I lead a very sheltered life. But after I lost my mom, I felt like I wanted to do something in the community. I got a hold of, I found out about Officer Mark Ampuja, who is the head of the community policing at that time. <coughs> he introduced me to the community policing program that they have. I attended 12 weeks and was overly impressed. I talked to all of my members about attending this course because I was just taken aback by how much our Manchester Police Department does. The second thing that I want to bring attention to is not only our community officers that I love to pieces. Um, the two that are assigned to our group belong to me and my group. Uh, it's Officer Battistelli and Officer Ampuja. Um, I'm sorry? Jajuga, sorry. <laughs> Jajuga. Um, they attend all of our meetings, and what makes me laugh is when they can't attend, it takes four other Manchester Police Department <laughs> officers to come in and take their place. Um, they've been very responsive to our members. We probably don't have huge issues. We have a lot of annoyances, and they're right there for us. They've taken care of annoyances that could have turned into bigger issues like drug dealers, but I mean little things like throwing trash out of a second story house and they go up there and they just say please don't throw the trash out there and the next day they move out. So we knew what was going on over there. Um, even the patrolmen, whether you know them or not, um, they're friendly, they stop when you need them. I can tell you from personal experience that I stopped an officer for what probably would be something stupid to everybody else but was very important to me. And he stopped and he actually took the time to help me and resolve my issue. So from a personal perspective, again, I can't say enough about the Manchester Police Department. And the last thing that I want to bring to your attention, which I know not a lot of people think about them, but I want to talk about the dispatch area. Um, being a, a, a watch president, I walk my dogs all the time, and I see a lot of things. And when I see things, I've got the dispatch number in my phone. I call dispatch, I tell them, this is not an emergency, but you know, this is what's happening. And uh, every single time I've ever called dispatch, it doesn't fall on the floor. Something happens. An officer calls me back. I get an email the next day if it's not an emergency. So I don't think there's any part of the Manchester Police Department that I could say I'm disappointed with. So I, I have to tell you one more personal thing. I work at home, so I'm telling you, I live a sheltered life. But I work for an international software vendor, and we have employees all over the United States. And I can't tell you how often that I talk to these people about going to their police department and finding out about community programs. Um, and they're awed by what I tell them about the Manchester Police Department. So that's my two cents for tonight, and thank you for listening to me. And I really, I know they deserve to be accredited. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Quinn, and I'm the director of the New Hampshire State Police. And it's an honor and a privilege, actually, to come before you tonight and uh, pledge my support for our Chief Mayor and all the members of the New Hampshire Police Department. I personally worked uh, closely with many of the Manchester Police officers throughout my career. I had a period of uh, approximately five years where I worked extensively with the Manchester Police and Narcotics Unit. I found all of their officers to be honest, energetic, engaged, and of the highest caliber. I want to talk a little bit about where we're at today in, in policing. We're all trying to do more with less. Our budgets are being cut. Partnerships are extremely important. And I can say uh, without a doubt that one of the strongest partners that the Department of Safety has is Chief Mayor of the Manchester Police Department. Why do I say that? I say that because there are many different types of cases that take place in Manchester. Uh, this is a very hard job. This is a very difficult city to work in, and they do extremely well with all of the uh, extenuating uh, uh, issues that they're dealing with. The increase in violent crime, prescription drug abuse, robberies, carjackings, 
burglaries, etc. Our drug unit uh, has worked with them uh, for many, many years. They have a very strong partnership with them. Quite frankly, they go out, they work together, and they just get the job done. And they've done it for many, many years. Why? Because they're focused on public safety and just making that arrest. Now, that's easier to say than it is to do, and sometimes people say that, but I will tell you that the Manchester Police Department always does that on any case that they work on. Um, they've done an extremely uh, fine job in their sex offender registry. I had an opportunity to work in that unit many years ago, and I know that Manchester PD was at the forefront for oversight with all the sex offenders they have within the city. We currently are working on our intelligence and analysis center, which is a statewide fusion center that supports the whole state. Recently, uh, I noticed some uh, areas that uh, Manchester PD might be able to help us with. Chief Merritt came right to the forefront and said, I'll do whatever I can, and has done so. He's actually uh, sealed the deal on that and made sure that we're going to increase in the intelligence share throughout the state. Um, we have several proactive operations right now ongoing with the Manchester Police Department that uh, Chief Mayor and I have discussed. And uh, he, like I said, he's just been a terrific partner. And there's just there's too many of them to name. But I will say that there are many proactive enforcement operations geared to making this city safe. And during all of our conversations, Chief Mayor's <coughs> primary concern is, I want to reduce the crime rate. I want to make this city safer. Um, I will say this, from what I've seen over the years, uh, I've worked with Chief Mara uh, in, in, in patrol. Uh, I've worked with him uh, when he was uh, working some of these enforcement operations. He is uh, very energetic, very enthused. He was a good street cop. He's a great chief. Um, and I will say that all his decisions are based on improved public safety. And the citizens of the city of Manchester are very lucky to have him as a chief as their chief and their leader. And on behalf of uh, the Department of Safety, I'm here to uh, stand before you and pledge our full support for Chief Mayor of the Manchester Police Department and their goal to be reaccredited. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Good evening. Uh, my name is Peter Janelle. I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Mental Health Center of Greater Manchester. The Mental Health Center is a private, not-for-profit organization that last year saw over 9,000 different individuals in a variety of programs. We operate residential programs, outpatient programs. Um, we have a 24-7 emergency services uh, call and um, uh, evaluation unit that operates uh, after hours and on the weekend, weekends at the two city hospitals. And so we, we have a lot of contact with the Manchester Police Department. Um, thankfully, most of the 9,500 or so people that we serve don't have involvement with law enforcement, but some of them do, especially if they're in acute crisis. And I can tell you over the, over the more than 30 years I've worked at the Mental Health Center in the past 12 as its president and CEO, that we've been fortunate to have the Manchester Police Department and the talent that exists there <coughs> in terms of working with people who experience mental illness. I go to conferences among my professional peers, and I, I'm proud to talk about the relationship that we have in this community our mental health center and the police department. And I'd like to give you a couple of examples. Um, going back into the early 90s, at least Judge Champagne, and I don't know if he's still here, reminded me that it was a little longer than what I had originally thought. Um, at, at, the, um, at the initiative of the police department, the mental health center, Judge Champagne at the district court, there was a group of advocates who, who were formed. They were called the Network of Legal and Mental Health Practitioners. And they met monthly for periods of time and quarterly. And it involved the Hillsborough uh, County House of Correction, the Sheriff's Department, uh, public defenders, other uh, mental health providers. And I know for a long period of time, uh, Chief Mara was a member of that legal and mental health professional uh, practitioners group. And they met to make sure that we were working together and collaboratively, because these are situations often that can really split organizations apart. They're very high profile sometimes. They're very difficult to manage, but I'm pleased to say because of the involvement of the Manchester Police Department, that effort was sustained, and it continues today. It actually more recently is now called the Community Connections Coalition, and the reason for the name change is that we've just, within the past two years, created a mental health court here in Manchester, which is designed uh, for individuals who get involved with uh, law enforcement for minor crimes, but it's obvious to the judge uh, and to the law enforcement um, um, folks 
that it's probably more as a result of an untreated mental illness than it is from them being criminal in any way. These are minor crimes. And so we can intercede so that they don't uh, uh, get far into the criminal justice system. They don't get incarcerated because really what they need is treatment. And again, Judge Champagne was instrumental in, in having our uh, mental health court uh, uh, get started here. The, the Community Connections Coalition, uh, Bob Puna and Ron Mello are two folks who have been, who are currently very involved in keeping that initiative going. Within the last uh, six months or so, actually at, uh, at, with the leadership of the chief, uh, our, I'm proud to say my police department, because I live in Manchester too, became the one of only two in New Hampshire that were trained in the crisis intervention team model. You may have heard of that, it's uh, Memphis originally. Um, we, we had that training, my staff was involved in the five day training, doing parts of the training, um, teaching the officers about mental illness and its treatment. Um, it was very, very successful and I even learned today that we're talking about maybe having some more officers trained and I know the officers from the Rochester Police Department I think participated in that as well. That's been key in terms of the officers being very effective in terms of dealing with people who experience mental illness. And then finally, and I tell my peers, my mental health center director peers, that if you can do one thing to make a difference in terms of how you, you work with your local police department, um, we make sure in our board of directors, we have board of directors between 18 and 21 members, that we have at least one member of the Manchester Police Department serving on that board of directors, <coughs> on our board of directors. Um, it's open doors in situations where uh, we've had challenges or conflict, it's helped us to, res to come to resolution very, very quickly. We know on our board of directors what's going on in the police department. They know what's going on in our organization. Um, Assistant Chief Gary Simmons was one of the first police officers when I uh, became a um, member of the management team at the Mental Health Center, who I got to know through his work on our board of directors. Currently, Lieutenant Ron Mello is a member of our board of directors. And I think that's critical in terms of keeping that uh, communication open. Um, finally, I mentioned that I'm a citizen of Manchester, I've been a citizen of Manchester for almost 35 years, and I'm proud to say that I, I really feel safe in this community because of the work of our local uh, police department, and I support their accreditation very strongly. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I'm the resident agent in charge of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. I've been, a, uh, I've been in that position since 2004. Uh, and I want to First of all, uh, take a different tack with the force before long. We have enjoyed a great working relationship with the Manchester Police Department for all the years that I've been here. And even prior to that, I knew the relationship that our guys had with the Manchester Police Department. And that's all aspects of that. That's every department, uh, including administration. Um, we enjoy a great relationship uh, in connection. We have, again, we enforce some of the most controversial laws in the book in, in, and uh, some of the most dangerous laws. Well, explosives and firearms aspect. They go hand in hand with the drugs. Just like Colonel Quinn was saying, we have uh, many proactive things that are going on uh, with Manchester Police Department. Many proactive investigations are going on right now. Uh, some of which, we, of course, we can't get into in this forum. However, I would like to point out that at any time that we've needed assistance or we have had any kind of uh, information that's impacted, we've always had this great open relationship. With, between the two agencies, and we have shared information, which seems to be something that we really should do in our opinion. <coughs> you know, okay, there's never been any issue with sharing information, never been any issue with sharing resources to include personnel as well. Uh, I usually take a no, another tack uh, in connection with these because I do it all the time. I also want to say, from, from my perspective too, as the supervisor, I also get a chance to review um, their reports in, in conjunction with our reports. <clears throat> their reports are always are, are, are spectacular, and I'm not I'm not just blowing smoke. It's based, they're spectacular reports, and they can basically answer all the uh, all the questions that I have, and I've seen it's withstood all kinds of scrutiny from our agency all the way up to the court system. Okay, there's never been an issue with timeliness, never been an issue with uh, with getting uh, the reports or, or or an issue with disclosure or anything. Uh, the other thing I, we enjoy too is we have a, uh, an agreement with them and, and, and we are uh, executing any kind of uh, high risk warrants. We have a, we, uh, used their SWAT team many, many occasions. In conjunction with that, we also have with them, we also have a, uh, we've all set up a, an overtime uh, Department of Justice. We have uh, overtime grants that, uh, I, I shouldn't use grants, 
uh, overtime funds that uh, are expended, can be expended in connection with firearms investigations, okay, to cover the costs. And uh, I gotta tell you, from the administrative side, it's been spectacular, um, because it really makes my job a lot easier. And, you know, <coughs> typically, um, whenever you're doing overtime, it could always be, being in your positions, you probably know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Trying to get the paperwork on, on time, dot the I's and cross the T's. And I can tell you from Manchester, from, from my perspective, it's, it's been great. There's been never an issue at all. It's always been timely. I know of instances across the country where that's not, that doesn't happen. Uh, but Manchester's always great. Whenever they come in, the federal government's notorious for new forms. You know, given, you know. And whenever there's a new form that comes out, I mean, they, they, they don't complain about it. They basically take it, understand it, get it in on time, and do what they have to, you know, do what they have to do. You know, and it works, and it makes my job a lot easier. Um, I, they have opened their doors to us in other ways, not only in, in connection with information and, and, and sharing and, and conducting joint cases, uh, they have also opened their door because I actually have stationed over the police department a, uh, an, an agent from there. In fact, he's here this evening as well. Um, one last thing I'd like to point out, it goes along with the report writing, and I'm, I'm thinking that this is, is the property issues. Um, the property has been spectacular, no issues at all. There's never been an issue with the chain, uh, in the chain of custody. There's never been an issue at all with respect to uh, notating the, the property reports. Uh, and. Uh, I'll just end it with that. And basically, said that I'd like to see them, you know, continue with their accreditation. But thank you for having me. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Eva Castillo, you. I'm a community activist, and uh, I am a new member of the uh, what is it? The commission, the police commission in Manchester, students, and I'm also a member of the community advisory board. So usually. I come to complain. <laughs> but today I'm proud to come in support of the Manchester Police Department. I'm a resident of Manchester. And uh, I think the police department is doing a superb job of reaching out to the community at large. Uh, thanks to the leadership of Chief Mara, previously disengaged people like minorities and immigrants such as myself, uh, we have been included and we feel part of the community. We feel represented and we feel that our concerns are being heard. Like Nabil said, we come from places where we do not trust the police, to stay away from them because they can hurt you. So, and we carry that here. And Previous to Chief Mara's efforts, that's pretty much what it was like, you know. Maybe it was in our head, but we stayed away from them, and whenever we had contact with them, it was negative contact. They have really done a tremendous job at, at building community, and by having us together with them, sharing as human beings, we've been able to bring down a lot of barriers, and on both sides, because also Manchester was not a diverse <coughs> place. And now it's becoming a lot more diverse and there's always hesitation and doubts about how to approach one another and there's a lot of misconceptions on both sides. So I think the Community <coughs> Advisory Board has, has served as a platform for us to understand each other and, and, and to build mutual respect and understanding. Because now officers are more used to having people that talk funny like I do and, and address differently, and, and maybe we have different cultures or customs that you don't quite understand or don't quite like, that's okay, you know? Uh, and now I'm proud to say that we serve as a model for the rest of the state. Also, I'm the mother of a Mexican boy that is a product of the police athletic team. That kid grew up in the inner city, and uh, his brothers were basically really thugs. They got in trouble and they end up, ended up in jail fighting drunk and all that. But thanks to, to the PAD program and the officer that, that run the PAD program that mentored him, he was able to pull away from what would have been a terrible destiny. And he now is the first person in his family to graduate from high school. He's the first person in his family that's going to college, and he's 
Higgins' aim in life is to become a police officer. So he studied criminal justice, and he keeps a straight. He's going to make it. He's never touched alcohol when all his friends are getting drunk since they're 14, 15 years old. He did not get his girlfriend pregnant with all his people that he grew up with had babies at 16 and 17 years old. So that speaks to the power of establishing one-on-one -on -one relationship with people. And I don't say it lightly. I'm very proud of him and, and I really credit the police department for, for being there for him. Previously, you know, people were not engaged with the police in the way that we are. So I really encourage you to continue the presentation because they deserve it and I feel proud of being a resident of Manchester. I feel secure. They do a great job keeping us safe and they work for everybody and now I really feel like I'm included in that everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time today. My name is Garrett Ian. I'm a resident of Concord, New Hampshire. On June 4th, I was arrested in front of the Manchester Police Department during a protest, and I became part of what is known now as the Chalking 8 incident. As part of my self-assigned duties in maintaining my blog at freeconcord.org, uh, I arrived at the start of the protest before much of a crowd had gathered, and I videotaped as people began chalking the sidewalks and a retaining wall at the police department. Uh, at the time, police did not move in or uh, stop people from chalking. Uh, so nobody was immediately arrested and uh, it was a nice peaceful protest. Then the mood of the protest changed significantly when two people were arrested for writing on the wall of the police department. Uh, so as those people were being arrested, uh, I was filming the arrest and I followed as they were being brought into the police station, uh, being sure to keep my distance and not interfere with the officers as they were making the arrest. Um, once me and another well-known videographer got inside the police department, we were ordered out of the lobby by <coughs> Officer Jonathan Duquesne, and uh, I inquired as to whether or not it was a lawful order to make us leave a public building, and he said it was. Um, as we were exiting, Sergeant John Patty told us that we would be arrested for blocking the door if we didn't leave the glassed-in area outside of the lobby. So uh, I went outside, and about two hours later, uh, actually backing up a little bit, at the time that I was inside the glassed-in section of the lobby, uh, Officer John Brady, uh, he said that we had to leave, and I asked if we could stand inside the police station. And he said, all right, come with me, and he went to grab my arm. And I backed away and said, no. And he said, everyone needs to leave or you'll be arrested. Uh, when I showed the video to a friend of mine who was a former police officer, he believed that I was under arrest at the moment that Officer Patty grabbed my arm. Uh, so. Two hours later, I ended up being arrested by Officer Patty uh, while outside of an area considered to be a crime scene where the, the chalking had taken place for allegedly refusing to move, uh, or allegedly refusing a lawful order to move from the sidewalk. Um, well, uh, before this was going on, uh, police were taking people's cameras away as the first arrests were going on. Uh, I was hiding behind some shrubbery actually filming as cameras were being confiscated by, I believe, at least nine people. Um, it really reflected in my mind uh, images I've seen from protests in Burma where uh, the military junta that rules the country, secret police would roll up in vans and they take away perceived leaders of protests. Uh, and presumably they're taken away to secret jails or executions. Fortunately, uh, I didn't consider my friends to be in danger of anything like that that day. However, the, the shades of the totalitarian regimes uh, demonstrated by Manchester police that day leave me, uh, did not leave me thinking very highly of whatever functions as the accountability mechanism for that organization. Um, protesters were, were herded up north on uh, Chestnut Street and they were given, as they were being moved up the street, they were being given lawful orders to move away from this crime scene area. Um, now, this is perhaps as much a flaw of the, the legislature as it is a fault of officers who exploit the statute, but the disorderly conduct statute is written in the state of New Hampshire to make you automatically guilty of a violation level offense if you are uh, doing anything that could make you eligible to receive a lawful order. Once you receive a lawful order from a law enforcement officer, if you refuse to cease commencing in whatever the behavior is, then you are guilty of the criminal level. But uh, based on the way the statute is written, 
All an officer needs to do is give a lawful order, and then they could make an arrest. And even if the person didn't do anything worthy of being arrested, they're already guilty of the violation of the offense. Uh, fortunately, uh, I defended myself in court, and I was able to beat the two charges of interfering with the crime scene and refusing to move by using video evidence that demonstrated that at the time that I was arrested, I was not given a lawful order to move. Um, so my issue uh, is, of course, my issue with the, the, the legislation isn't one that Kalia can take up, and that's more for the New Hampshire legislature. Uh, but I think the, the fact that Manchester PD violated that for at least I think there were four arrests for refusing to move, and so far I don't believe anyone's been convicted of the criminal level refusing to move, only the violations. I was found not guilty of either. So uh, all the while that police were taking cameras from private citizens at the protest, they failed to record or, or to save any of the footage that was recording from their own cameras affixed to the police station. Um, this is at best a negligent destruction of evidence, and at worst, it's the covering of one's tracks following a massive violation of multiple civil rights. Aside from losing their own footage, the collection of evidence from confiscated cameras was botched. Uh, for the fifth person arrested that day, who recorded her entire encounter up to the point that she was arrested, um, many private video images and uh, photographs from her phone were taken off when, uh, when it was collected as evidence. However, the most important video, the video of her actually being arrested, was not included with the evidence in the case. Um, so also th those private images that were taken off of her phone were sent to everybody that was arrested that day, not even uh, if it was relevant to her case. Um, so Manchester police not only violated the privacy of those whose cameras and phones were taken, but also violated the sworn terms of the search warrant which authorize the extraction of only evidence that is relevant to that event and that specific date and time. Uh, while I have addressed much of the negative I have experienced from the Manchester Police Department, that is not to say that all of my interactions with officers employed there have been of the lesser professionalism that I experienced on June 4th. Uh, though I was forced to invest my own resources into defending myself from their legal attack, having the opportunity to have succeeded against an employed attorney for the city without paying for a lawyer myself and representing myself. Uh, from this experience, I feel that uh, it's taught me a lot about the legal system, and I plan to use what I have learned to help others uh, who have become victims of frivolous charges, and until those loopholes exploited by unaccountable authority are closed. And I welcome any questions. Well, I appreciate the fact that you've brought your concerns to our attention, and we will look into the comments that you've made. Thank you. Welcome to New Hampshire. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to speak about uh, the maturing relationship between our Crime Watch Group and the Manchester Police Department and to support the reaccreditation of the department. I'm a volunteer, co-captain with the Somerville Crime Watch Group. We reside in Ward 7 here in Manchester. We have between 25 and 80 members that attend meetings during the summer and fall. We break for winter and come back in the spring. I'm also a graduate of the uh, Citizens Police Academy. And when I completed that course, I realized that not everyone would have the opportunity to attend that. So I took it as my responsibility as the captain and co-captain of the Crime Watch Group to bring that information <coughs> to our citizens. And to that end and to that responsibility, Captain Mara and or Chief Mara and Captain Riley have been indefatigable in helping us. Every time we have asked for a representative from the department or a division to come to our Crime Watch group, they have come and educated our, our members. When we experienced um, a homicide and suicide on October 22nd, 2010, our officers went door to door, retrieved about 400 surveys of people asking about this, how they felt safe in their house, what they thought about the police community. They attracted over 100 people to come to a meeting, completely diverse in ethnicity, representative of our citizens, and explain what happened and how the police responded to it. Several blocks were shut down for almost a whole day. So there was fear in the community, but by the presence of our police officers, they allied those fears. When about 120 new students came to St. Anthony's Middle School, we were concerned about sexual predators living in the neighborhood. And without hesitation, Captain Riley assigned 
the chief of the, the yeah, representative from the sexual offenders to come and speak to our group. There's a bar on Wilson Street under whose roof almost everything that is evil has occurred, had occurred. There were two bodies murdered and lying in the streets of Wilson and Somerville Street. And the Manchester Police Department effectively shut down that bar and prevented at least a dozen people who I know personally who were ready to leave the neighborhood because of their fear of safety. So our, our group has been in existence for three years now. We reformed after several years of being inactive. At the beginning of our um, meetings, people didn't realize the change in the nature of crime in Manchester. A lot of our older citizens never locked their doors. And by a show of hands, we asked who was locking their doors, and maybe two hands went up at the beginning of our meetings. Now every hand goes up. So the safety of our citizens has increased directly related to police officers and the representatives of the police department, Chief Mara and Captain Riley of Santa Claus. It's a deep educational process that's going on. Uh, the first year we were together, people were complaining and wanting to know why crime was not being solved and it's a waste of time to call the police department. Now we know the process of investigation. Now we know how long it takes to find the real criminals. Now we know who's in our streets. We know our community police officers. We can call them directly through their cell phones. It's, it has immensely increased the safety of our citizens. And I fully support the reaccreditation of the people. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, Colonel. Captain. Welcome to New Hampshire. My name is Ernie Yarrington. I'm a senior special agent with the United States Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. I'm also a resident of Manchester, and for the most part, I grew up here. In my 29 years as a special agent with ATF, I have had the fortunate opportunity to work with several federal, state, and local agencies throughout the United States. I returned home in uh, January of 1991 here in Manchester. I uh, quickly developed a rapport with Manchester Police Department that, quite frankly, I consider myself extremely fortunate. I have a desk there, an email, computer, phone, uh, and as such, I have worked hand in hand with them in a myriad of investigations, culminating in successful prosecutions, ranging from homicides, shootings, firearms trafficking, narcotics trafficking, burglaries, home invasions, I mean, the full gamut. And uh, as I said, I've been very lucky working with a number of tremendous federal, state, and local agencies. But I have never experienced a more professional, competent, thorough, and compassionate agency than Manchester Police Department. And uh, I don't know if the people of Manchester really appreciate the job that they do. Uh, I've been present for the last two reaccreditation panels. I closed in saying that if, <clears throat> if I ever had to do it all over again, and if I couldn't be an ATF agent, I would want to be with Manchester Police Department. Again, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about our relationship with uh, the, <coughs> the police department. Um, I live in, our church is in the, the center of the city. It's um, an inner city parish. And we had house meetings, and at the house meetings, the people were worried about safety um, and uh, some other things that were coming up because we are a multicultural parish uh, with immigrants from all parts of Latin America, from uh, Viet Vietnam, from Africa, uh, French Canadian, um, and our English speaking population. Um, so after the house meetings, we through uh, Eva Castillo, we uh, invited um, um, the police department to come and talk to our people. And uh, um, it comes to Chief Mara and uh, Captain Riley both came and they talked about the necessity of having confidence in the police department so that crimes could be uh, the people who give information and, and also uh, report crimes. But they also heard the, uh, especially the undocumented Latin community 
and their, their horrible fear of the police department becoming uh, agents of um, immigration. Um, and uh, Captain Riley, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mara, wrote up after that, wrote up a policy of when you ask for, for documents, um, uh, police, uh, the police, the people out on the streets. And uh, he came back to our church again with uh, 80, 90, 100 people came to the meeting. Uh, he explained to them the, the policy. Uh, he took me personally and showed me the, the tape they had made so that all the uh, police officers would understand that policy uh, about um, Im immigrants, uh, undocumented immigrants. Um, and uh, he came back and also shared with the community that, that policy um, about immigration um, and the, the documents. Um, and then finally they came back with uh, the third meeting with the, uh, the congregation with uh, the people who patrol the area around the church. And um, uh, we had a chance to meet those people. There, we have a Vietnamese Tet celebration every year. The police always come and are there present uh, uh, at that celebration. Um, so the relationship has really been a wonderful relationship, helping to try and create confidence between ourselves and our people and, and the uh, police and uh, the um, Chief Mara and, and Captain Roddy have been <coughs> wonderful in helping us to do that. Um, and it's important for the people and it's important also for the uh, police department. But they were very cooperative uh, and continue to be very cooperative with us in, in helping to alleviate some of the fears and also helping people to have more confidence and to know each other so that we can talk and communicate when that has to happen. Uh, so I want to, to continue to ask that, the, uh, that this accreditation come through for them because they have shown to us uh, their professionalism and their real concern to listen to the people of the, uh, of the inner city. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to Manchester. Uh, my name is Tim Susan. I'm the Public Health Director for the City of Manchester. And I just want to take a minute and leave you with a couple of examples about the working relationship between the City of Manchester Health Department and the City of Manchester Police Department. Uh, and I will also say I'm also a resident of Manchester. I've been for my entire life. Um, the first example I want to share with you is really our Police Department's commitment to uh, the Public Health Preparedness Program in the City of Manchester. For the past 10 years, we've worked hand in hand with the Police Department to make sure that our community could appropriately respond to a public health emergency uh, in a timely manner. The police department's been an active member of our Public Health Preparedness Advisory Council, which is a regional group that develops the emergency response plans in response to a public health emergency. And whether the plan was for uh, pandemic influenza, isolation and quarantine, medical points of dispensing, or emergency <coughs> sheltering, the police department has not only been involved in the preparation of the plan, but has flawlessly executed their duties during both uh, drills and real life emergencies. And for that, I can tell you that I am very, very thankful. The second example I want to talk about briefly is a very uh, non-traditional partnership we have with the police department, and it's through our division of uh, chronic disease prevention and neighborhood health. Um, Specifically, the Community Police Division is very active in our Healthy Eating Active Living program and our Safe Routes to Schools program. Recently, as you heard uh, Barbara Miles say, the Police Department helped us in collecting over hundreds of door-to-door -door resident surveys about what the quality of life issues were that residents were faced. Um, believe it or not, the Health Department and the Police Department co-presented these findings at the Statewide Healthy Eating Active Living Conference uh, this past year which really highlights the police department's commitment to building healthy communities uh, and improving the neighborhood quality of life um, in Manchester. In addition, with the Safe Routes to Schools program, we work specifically around the Wilson Street Elementary School to prom promote pedestrian safety. They've completed targeted pedestrian safety operations to increase enforcement of traffic violations in the school zone and routinely provide bike helmets, 
fittings and safety education at community-based events such as family education nights and neighborhood block parties. Uh, I often joke with the community police guys that they are really public health people, they just don't know it yet, but we're getting them to come around. Uh, I'm proud to work and live in a city where its police department is committed to not only protecting the safety of its residents, but also improving their health. And with that, I would, you know, I would urge you to uh, look favorably upon their reaccreditation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak regarding the Manchester Police Department. The Secret Service has two missions, a protective mission and an investigative mission. And we rely heavily on the Manchester Police Department. Manchester being a major city in New Hampshire, sees many presidential and vice presidential visits throughout the year. Chief Mara, Lieutenant Tessier have been great assets to our uh, protective mission. Uh, as well as all of the Manchester Police Department. They do an outstanding job. Not only do they assist us in securing our protectees, but they also provide a safe environment to the general public. They do all this while keeping in mind the impact that we have on businesses and the general public, uh, as well as traffic. So if anyone's been caught in a traffic jam, I guarantee you it was the Secret Service's fault. Uh, to, put, to put together a complex protective plan uh, takes a lot of communication. Manchester Police uh, communicates very well, not only with the Secret Service, but all the other entities involved, whether it be, whether it be the military, the state police, and the surrounding cities that, uh, that these protectees visit. We have a great working relationship with Manchester Police. Uh, they are professional uh, and a very capable police department. They're also very fiscally responsible. Um, and what I mean by that is they don't just flood an area with police officers and call it secure. They put the time in, uh, many hours. They walk around, they think of all sorts of scenarios that could possibly happen. And they put an adequate amount of uniformed offices in strategic areas uh, rather than just uh, populating it and making it look good. On the investigative side, I've had the uh, great opportunity to work with the uh, detect uh, many detectives. Um, I'm currently working with uh, Detective Martin Swerko and Detective Ken Wooley on a complex uh, bank fraud investigation. Um, they work tirelessly, um, and they uh, are professional, very knowledgeable, and um, in, in my position, I, I end up traveling a lot, so I'm out of town, and they continually uh, investigate uh, these crimes and bring me up to speed on it when I get back in town, and uh, they certainly make uh, my life a lot easier. And, and last but certainly not least, uh, not only are they professional, but they're very res respectful uh, to, to the uh, to witnesses, to suspects, to victims, and defendants. Uh, they treat everybody with respect and dignity. And uh, I highly recommend that they get reaccredited. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Daniel O'Neill. I live at 249 West Haven Road in Manchester. I'd like to begin by welcoming you to, Man welcoming you to Manchester. You are visiting Manchester during a special time in the national election process, with New Hampshire having the first in the nation election primary, which will be held tomorrow throughout the state. You are also visiting during another unique period of no snow. <laughs> no, no snow is good for our municipal public works budget, but bad for the state ski and tourist industry. It is my great pleasure that I appear before you this evening to speak about the great work of the Manchester Police Department and dedicated efforts of the department's sworn and civilian staff. I speak to you this evening wearing two hats. First, I currently serve as an alderman at large in Manchester and have so for the last 14 years. Over that time, I've had the honor of serving with and working with the men and women of the Manchester Police Department. The citizens of Manchester are fortunate to have a dedicated group of police officers and civilian staff who provide a high level of public safety each and every day. The city of Manchester, like many other communities across the nation, has faced the challenges of our economy. 
Despite not having all the resources needed to protect our citizens, the men and women of the Manchester Police Department, <coughs> led by Chief David Mara and Assistant Chief Gary Simmons, have stepped up to those challenges and continue to make Manchester a safe community to live, work, and visit. They have to be commended for their efforts. I also appear uh, before you as the chairman of the Manchester Police Athletic League. One of my colleagues spoke about that earlier. Since 1992, MPAL has served thousands upon thousands of young people from across our city. Since 2004, we've been able to provide many of those services at the Manchester Police Athletic League Office of Michael Briggs Community Center. During this economic downturn, it would have been easy for the department to move the MPAL officer, uh, Rich L, back to the patrol division. Chief Mara, as part of his continued overall commitment to community policing in our city, has chosen to keep Officer Rell assigned to MPAL and allow MPAL to continue to serve the young people of our city. I urge your favorable uh, consideration of reaccrediting the Manchester Police Department and would welcome the opportunity to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eddie Edwards, I'm the uh, Director of Look Enforcement for the State of New Hampshire. And we're welcoming you to New Hampshire and the city of Manchester. Uh, much has been said, uh, comments that I would reflect on, I guess, probably, probably the one last. Uh, of course, the only. But one of the things I want to kind of echo are some of the themes you've heard tonight, starting with um, partnerships. The city of Manchester uh, has the mm -hmm. largest number of liquor licensees in the state. And because of their efforts, we have been able to keep uh, liquor law violations down in the city, uh, which is a tremendous task, as you know. Um, establishments that do not operate according to the law present problems in EWIs, violence, and pregnancy, and personal <coughs> issues associated with those things. So the partnership that Manchester has limited itself to has been a great benefit to the state of New Hampshire. As an agency that's going through the accreditation process, I can tell you that it's very grueling. And I have personally had my staff <coughs> work with Manchester to prepare our agency to go through this process. So uh, that's been a great benefit to our, our, our organization personally. The other thing we've heard quite heavily is community awareness, community participation, community policing, which is very difficult um, for many different agencies. And Manchester Police Department has done a great job in leading the effort there. Uh, for the state. The other thing you heard is uh, issues with uh, minorities, racial issues, and that is a very difficult, sensitive area in Long Beach, as you know. And I think most of the uh, minority uh, participants who have spoken tonight spoke about being included in the city of Manchester, uh, which is a very positive issue. And I can tell you I also serve as the uh, state's chairperson for the DMC, which is disproportionate minority contact. And uh, Chief Morrow, has been a uh, leader in this issue, a strong leader. He has not shied away from this issue, and as I said before, it's a very sensitive issue in the law enforcement. But it's one he has gladly taken on, participated in recruiting women and minorities to the police department without reducing the standards, which is very important. He's also shown a great deal of compassion in working with immigrants, minorities, without ignoring the law. So I think that's a, uh, that's, that's, that should be heads off to the minority <coughs> issue as well. And I want to spend just a moment to talk about professionals. We're all professionals in law enforcement, but uh, that doesn't mean that we're without fault. It means that we constantly try to improve ourselves and improve our service and delivery of services. And I think the Manchester Police Department is an excellent example as they embody what New Hampshire law enforcement is all about. And although they're a city police department, their leadership infects this entire state as a standard. So I, I certainly stand in support of Manchester Police Department's accreditation. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Dave Cargill. I'm the United States Marshal for the District of New Hampshire. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, I'm here to speak in favor of the Manchester Police Department and their renewal for accreditation. The Manchester Police Department, from my point of view, uh, I've been a police officer for over 28 years. I've worked with Manchester uh, probably about the last 20. Uh, worked for the last three Manchester police chiefs. And I can tell you, from what I've seen with their agency, is the deepened tradition. What would drive their tradition is their professionalism and their teamwork. I've overseen uh, organized crime investigations here in Manchester as a trooper, as a marshal, we oversee the New Hampshire Joint Fugitive Task Force. And without the 
the assistance of the Manchester Police Department, working in the city, I recommend the city meeting us. I'm a great organization, and I truly support their efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Tell you what, there are very few chiefs in this state that can get my first award. <laughs> Good evening, Captain, Colonel. Uh, welcome to New Hampshire, welcome to Manchester. Uh, my name is Kieran Ramsey. I am the Supervisory Senior Resident Agent in charge of the New Hampshire offices of the FBI. I'm here tonight to reaffirm what you've already heard time and time again, but let me do it from the perspective of the FBI, and that is to reaffirm the partnership, the significant and robust partnership between the FBI and the Manchester Police Department. That partnership extends not only in the countless joint investigations that we uh, regularly commence, but also in the participation of mutual task forces that we have here in the state, here in the city. In regards to task forces, let me start with the uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force. Since 2004, the Manchester Police Department has been a full-time participant on the Joint Terrorism Task Force, or the JTTF, as we like to call it. The JTTF's mission is certainly focused on maximizing uh, state, local, federal partnerships to really disrupt terrorist activities in the state and certainly to prevent any terrorist act that perhaps could happen. Since their participation, since 2004, Manchester police detectives working alongside FBI agents have resolved countless predicated assessments into terrorist activities here in the Manchester area and really throughout the state. Uh, they continue also to lead the efforts with FBI agents in resolving and investigating full national security investigations into terrorist, terrorist financiers and terrorist facilitators believed to be here in the state. Again, their efforts are, are very impressive alongside our own agents. Uh, as well, uh, the Manchester Police Department since 2008 has been a full-time participant on the New Hampshire Safe Streets Gang Task Force. Now, the Gang Task Force was really formed in 2008 pursuant to the leadership of the Manchester Police Department. They recognized a trend in increasing violent crime, that violent crime being gang-related, and came to the FBI saying we need to pull our resources for a new targeted focused effort to resolve this issue, to deter, disrupt, dismantle the gang activity that we're seeing in the city of Manchester. I can tell you the Manchester Police Department, alongside FBI agents on that task force, as well as state police and other agencies, have disrupted and dismantled countless nationally aligned and neighborhood-based street gangs here in the city of Manchester and throughout Hillsborough County and continue to attack, to attack that gang activity throughout the state. Really, our ultimate goal in that perspective is to make sure that there is never a street, never a neighborhood that is impassable because of gang activity. And the contributions made by the Manchester Police Department in that regard are numerous and, and far too uh, numerous to even go into detail in this setting. Let me go to also the countless uh, joint investigations that we'll undertake. Uh, whether it be uh, the worst of the worst, or when it is the worst of the worst that we go after, whether it be serial bank robbers, white collar fraudsters, or predators of the sexual exploitation of children. The Manchester Police Department has been a countless uh, participant and solid, solid partner in those investigations. I can give you one example. As of late in 2010, there were a string of bank robberies, hotel robberies, and store robberies by an armed crew that were literally terrorizing the businesses of the city of Manchester. It was a joint investigation between the Manchester Police Department, the FBI, and the ATF that ultimately identified that crew, arrested that crew, indicted that crew, and they have all since pled guilty. That crew no longer can pose a safety threat to the citizens of Manchester Police Department, to the citizens of Manchester, and it is certainly because of the efforts, the extensive efforts on the part of Manchester Police detectives that worked alongside the FBI agents and the ATF agents in that regard. Let me add one final thing. You've heard uh, from several community advocates as to the community outreach that the Manchester Police Department does here in the city. I will tell you firsthand, and, and very admittedly, it is the FBI that is piggybacking, quite literally, off of their community outreach efforts to make sure that I comply with the FBI and the Department of Justice requirements for community outreach in this community. Uh, between Captain Riley, uh, Chief Mara, and his other command staff members, it is their already existing community outreach efforts that I have entered into with them to say the FBI also needs to have contact with these folks and please help us. They readily welcomed us, they readily accepted us, and it has been a fantastic partnership since. 
the members that you've heard from today, I have met because of the Manchester Police Department. Last but not least, I can tell you I have uh, been very close, uh, had very close working relationships with Chief Mara and his command staff in countless situations of the crisis nature, be it in a unified command situation or otherwise. I can tell you every one of those, the FBI has had no doubt in terms of the capabilities and the professionalism of the police department. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Captain and Colonel. My name is Michael Delaney. I'm the Attorney General for the State of New Hampshire, and I do want to welcome you to the state. Uh, and also, I want to extend uh, my thanks to Kalia for, for allowing um, our community to participate in this process. Uh, I had hoped to contribute um, uh, to this process by providing you with information, but I must say, as a resident of, of Manchester, uh, I think I've gotten more out of it uh, in terms of my opportunity this evening to, to listen to our community to listen to New Hampshire's law enforcement community uh, really talk about what we all know um, is the highest of professional standards uh, in the Manchester Police Department. And, and I would strongly uh, encourage you uh, to support uh, its re-accreditation. Uh, I want to start by talking about the leadership of the department um, because that, uh, that is obviously critical for any police department. And, and uh, Manchester Police Department uh, has benefited and enjoyed very strong leadership uh, under Chief Mayor. You've heard many examples of that this evening. Uh, just to start with an anecdote, uh, I do not believe that I have been in public with Chief Mayor uh, at any event uh, where he has not been equipped with a pack of Manchester Police Department badges um, that he has been ready to hand out uh, to our children across the city. And, and that's because he takes very seriously uh, his responsibility to be part of the crime prevention and reduction effort uh, in his community. And I think he recognizes the long-term importance um, of our young children having that confidence and trust um, in their police officers. Uh, when I heard this evening that Eva Castillo, who has been a community leader not only uh, in Manchester, but at the state level um, advocating uh, her community and particularly as a member of the Latino Commission to hear that she uh, is serving on the Police Commission. Uh, that takes leadership uh, and I think that's a credit not only to her and what she's done uh, but also uh, to Chief Mara. And I will tell you that the issue of immigration uh, is a very controversial one to speak about publicly but Chief Mara has been a very strong public voice in saying not only will we enforce our state and federal laws but I am going to ensure that my citizens feel safe coming forward and reporting crime, and we're going to do everything we can in this community to encourage them to come forward and have the confidence to report crime. Um, that's critical, um, and sometimes it's hard to do that, and he has been a very strong voice in doing that. And finally, we've heard some testimony about crisis intervention teams. I don't think there's anything right now in law enforcement that's more important than improving the outcomes, the positive outcomes, between our law enforcement uh, and those in our community with mental illnesses. And you are in one of the two cities uh, in New Hampshire that hasn't been, in fact, has been on um, the lead cusp in this state of establishing these crisis intervention teams. And it is true that only Manchester and Rochester have really put together initiatives in that effort. And, and, and I credit Chief Mara uh, for leading that initiative. In terms of the work product of the Manchester Police Department, the New Hampshire Attorney General's Office exercises supervisory authority over the investigations and the prosecutions uh, of all homicides and suspicious deaths. And in that regard, we partner closely with the Manchester Police Department uh, in all of their investigations. And it gives us a very good perspective on their detectives unit. Um, for every incident, we actually dispatch a prosecutor or more than one prosecutor to work hand in hand with the police department. Uh, and I can tell you, in echoing what Director Bidham said, um, they exhibit the highest degree of training. Um, they want to do the job right. Uh, they do not cut corners. Uh, and they appreciate the importance of abiding by criminal procedures and criminal laws. Uh, and we have enjoyed a very close working relationship with them. Uh, and while I don't have statistics, um, I can assure you, based on my experience, uh, that they have an exceptionally good clearance rate uh, on their work. Area. We also work regularly with the Manchester Police Department, uh, uh, collaborating with them uh, on drug investigations, uh, and, and I, can, I can speak to the caliber of their work in that area. 
I'm not going to repeat what uh, other individuals have said about community outreach. It's, it's obviously there. Uh, Manchester Police Department on a statewide level has been a leader in supporting criminal justice initiatives. Uh, they have consistently worked closely with me as the chair of the Governor's Commission, Commission on Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault. Uh, they have partnered with us and been in a seat on our Governor's Commission um, for as long uh, as I can remember. Uh, we partner with them regularly as a, as a ICAP affiliate uh, in terms of our Internet Crimes Against Children. They have served on the boards of our child advocacy centers uh, and have really uh, been uh, a lead force in, in, in serving uh, as an example of the partnerships that you've been hearing about tonight. Finally, my office does have an Office of Public Integrity um, and we oversee uh, all of the investigations of law enforcement officers uh, in the state uh, based on allegations of public integrity crimes. Uh, that means we have a lot of complaints and traffic into our office at, of a non-criminal nature that has to be referred back to police departments. I can tell you that we have every confidence uh, in the track record of the Manchester Police Department um, receiving citizens' complaints that come through our office um, regarding members of the department, uh, and they have ex exhibited uh, a consistent willingness to receive those complaints um, and vet them thoroughly. Uh, and, and finally, um, in those instances, uh, where an allegation uh, may be raised, meritorious or non-meritorious, that warrants um, independent perspective and involvement, um, the Manchester Police Department has never hesitated to bring our office into the mix when an independent agency uh, warrants reviewing something. Uh, and and uh, in our experience, we have been brought into that process uh, at an early stage whenever <coughs> questions um, have arisen in our involvement. So I thank you for being here, and I strongly support the reaffirmation. Thank you. Good evening. I'm the director of the International Institute of New Hampshire. My organization uh, works on behalf of the U.S. State Department resettling refugees in the city of Manchester. I'm delighted to be here uh, this evening to speak on behalf of the Manchester Police Department. They provide the facility uh, in which the city task force on refugee and immigrant integration uh, meets which Chief Mara is a uh, member. Uh, they also uh, host a community advisory board, which you've heard a little bit about um, this evening, which incidentally uh, met today. Uh, in both of these uh, groups, uh, representatives of Manchester's diverse ethnic community are, are present. Uh, the Manchester Police Department, through the support of these forums and associated activities, demonstrates their commitment to community policing and to outreach, uh, which uh, begins at a very early age. I might um, add my uh, son, who's a third grader at uh, Green uh, Acres Elementary School, uh, came home with a story about how delighted he was uh, with a uh, Manchester Police Department visit, which I guess I could characterize as a dog and pony show. <laughs> so um, I, I'm a, uh, been a Manchester resident for about 24 years, and I'm proud of our police department. Thanks. Thank you. I think that covers everyone who's signed up saying they'd like to speak. However, I'd like to open the floor if there's anyone else who would like to address the team. With no one else ready to address the team, I'd like to thank you all for coming out to provide us with your comments concerning the agency. And I apologize for anybody's last name that I have <laughs> changed or altered with my inability to properly pronounce them. And we will call this public hearing to a close at 9.02 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>